All right, welcome to the third installment of the OIM Stocks and Options Trading Forum. What's the day? February, what's the date? The 8th? 7th? 7th, February 7th. Today we're going to go over uh, basic option strategies and basic swing trading strategies. And Jamario Walker is going to start us off. Welcome everybody, um, I'm Jamario Walker and I will be going over the basics of option swing trading. Let me go ahead and share my screen. It still says disabled, uh, Thomas. All right, I'll fix that. All right. Let me uh, present. Can all you guys see uh, the basics of option swing trading? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let me go. So the goal of this presentation is to share some technical chart reading fundamentals, break down the basics of options trading, and then I will show you guys how to apply these in the art of swing trading. So the tools we'll need, um, a daily candlestick chart. I utilize both the Hakinashi and the standard candlestick, and I'll show you both of those the pros and the cons for each. Um, you got to have your moving averages. On everything I look at, I utilize the 20 and the 200, no matter what. It just helps me to gauge uh, the trend of the stock, uh, the health of the stock. It helps me to really see what's going on in that asset that I'm tracking. Um, I, I'm also starting to use the eight and the 13. It, it allows you to get a closer feel to the price action so you can get in and out of trades a little bit faster. I'll show you that also. So I, I, I recommend the 20 and the 200. And you know, if you want to get close to the action, the eight and the 13. You can utilize others. I know a lot of people use the 50, the 100, um, whatever works for you, but I'll show you these today. Also, we'll need our MACD. It helps us to really gauge the, the selling and the buying pressure on an asset. Um, it can help us get in and out of our trades easier. You can pick tops or get close to the top close to the bottom by watching the price action and reading your MACD, you know, I'll show you that also. Um, for options trading, you wanna have at least about 2,500 to 5,000 to, to get started, to kind of wet your feet in it. Um, options, uh, they're a little more volatile than a regular stock and I'll show you that. So you really gotta be mindful of, of what you're spending per stock, uh, per contract. Um, I'll show you all that a little later, but just, just be mindful. You need a little bit of money to get started. And a lot of times your brokerage will ask you to um, get a higher level brokerage account, like a level two trading account to really show that you um, are responsible enough to trade options and that you know a little bit about it. So it is an added step at your brokerage to get that um, authority to trade options. So just, just look into that if you want to try it and make sure you've got that level um, at your brokerage to allow it. And Jamario, can I jump in and just say one thing really quickly? If you have questions, um, maybe type them in the chat so that everyone can see them. And then at the end, he can answer those questions if that's all right. Thanks, Jamario. You guys Jamaria. can stop me at any time also. And I have added some pauses in here for questions. So just, just let us know. And if I'm going too fast, let me know. I can slow down also. So let's go. All right. So candlestick basics. Um, basically, the candlestick charts, they started in Japan um, before the U.S. started using it. It was basically used to, to measure the supply and demand of rice. But what the guys uh, started to discover was that it kind of showed the influence of uh, the trader's emotions also. Not just the supply and demand weighed on the up and down movement, but the emotions also. So what the candlesticks really show is the trader's emotion. When you see a rise in the stock, that's, that's um, a rise in people's emotion for their stock. That's what pushes it up. More buyers are buying the stock. They got a great feeling or it's great earnings reports coming out. Their emotions push that stock up. People wanted to buy more to make more money. And you sell when you fear of losing money. That's what causes the stock to go down. So it's largely through by our by traders' emotions. So this is your basic candlestick. Um, your red candlesticks, um, they're red because the price action opened at the top of, of your wick here. This is, the, the part in the middle is called the, the body of the candle. 
and these are the wicks of the candle. For a red bar, it opened at the top of that bar, at the top of the body, and it closed at the bottom of the body. For a green candle, you open at the low of the body and you close at the top of it. And these wicks, they show where the price action was for that day. On this green candle, it opened here, but at one point of the day, it was down here. Say this was 100 and you got 200. At one point, this stock was below 100. That's why that wick is there. And at one point it was above 200. That's why this wick is there. But at the close of that, that price movement, that whether it's a day, an hour, whatever the time frame for this bar, at the close of that bar, this is where we close that. The wicks are important and also the real body is important also. All of that go, goes into helping you to see the, the trend and direction of that stock, helped you to decide and see what uh, the buyers and sellers are doing, who's winning that battle. Um, just reading the candlestick, it really shows the story of the stock, your asset you're tracking. And what we have here is a couple of the common candlestick patterns you'll see in charts. Um, what you wanna be mindful of is the area where the stock comes down and it stops that, that downward movement. We've got two red bars, meaning our price action started here, closed there, open here and closed there, but then it didn't go any lower here. At one point we were lower, but the buyers came in and picked it up off of those lows. And then the more buyers came in, we got two green bars taking us off of this low area. Hammer is very, very common in um, stocks that have healthy uh, volume, healthy um, institutional support. Um, that good support is what shows these, these patterns. Traders look for these patterns and they act on these patterns when they see these in, in, in live action on charts. Inverted hammer is close to the same as this. You've got a down movement that stops going down and reverses. Morning star is close to the same. We got a couple of down, down, uh, down bars, a massive red bar, and then a green bar that almost takes out this entire red bar. When I'm watching the price action, what I like to do is I mark off a range. This, this is my red range now. We get no more further down movement. So what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a green to take out this range of red. I get an upward move. It doesn't take out the entire red, but it takes over 50% of it. And then I get another move taking us out of this red range. This is our confirmation that we've got a reversal point and we're going up to the upside. Morning stars is, is very common on your chart patterns. Bullish engulfing. Engulfing signals um, in general are very powerful because it engulfs this red bar. We've got selling pressure, but then we've got these buyers stepping in. It takes out all of that selling pressure. You come down to a point and these buyers are so strong, it takes out two of these segments, two of these time frames, whether it's a day, two days, um, whatever your time frame is for, your, for your, your candles, this buying pressure was so strong, it took all of that out. Very strong signal and we get an up move following that up. So a lot of these patterns are just, you're coming down to a point, a reversal point and you're bouncing off of that point. Us as traders, we're trying to capitalize on these situations. We don't, we don't know how long this trend is gonna go, but we clearly see the trend uh, appearing and, and taking off. We, we clearly see that. So just, just come, just get, get a little better at, at taking a, a, a bar by bar look at your charts reading the chart action in real time and, and really coming to an understanding of what's happening. Who's, who's winning the battle, the buyers or the sellers, and, and what's that strongest trend and how strong that trend is. Let's see, it's the same thing for the bearer signals. You come up to a point, there's no more buyers now, there's sellers pushing this price action down. As you can see from the tail, at one point, this was a full green bar. At one point, this was full. Seller started to start, started to sell and it pushed that price action all the way back down. So we've got a shooting star pattern, a very, very bearish signal. A lot of traders primarily look for shooting stars and hammers before they put on trades. You can do scans for, for companies and stocks that are showing hammers, shooting stars, or any of these other signals that can really um, help you out as far as finding you know, uh, things to trade finding what other traders are trading. You can, you can scan for these signals um, to help you out, but it's better if you learn how to look for it in real time on your own. 
Hanging Man's another Evening Star. Just a lot of chart patterns for you guys to, to really get used to seeing because you will see these in your charts. You may see these already in the charts that you watch. But let's, let's go a little bit further. Uh, let's get off with this. These are a lot of the same chart patterns. Um, you got another, this is a, a massive red bar. This green bar almost took out the entire red, followed by another red, which isn't enough to take out any of this green. This red shows up, but it's not enough to take out that green bar at all. Didn't even come to the 50% the fifty percent line and get an up move after that. That's a weak, weak red, weak selling pressure right there. And the bears take that out. Same thing here. We got weak red pressure come down to a point and we bounce off of that zone. Um, aside from the bullish and bearish uh, patterns, you also have continuation patterns. Um, so a stock can only do three moves. It can go up, it can go down or sideways. That's, that's all it can do. Um, the stocks, markets in general, they aren't, they aren't very um, complex. We bring complexity to it. All it can do is go up, down or sideways. And these are some of the most common sideways uh, patterns you'll see. The, the doji candles where we got a wick on the top and the bottom and a small body. It shows indecision in the price movement. Neither the, the bulls or the bears are winning, just a steady consolidation phase for whatever asset that's, that's tracking. You'll see that a lot. When you see stuff like this, what you're waiting to do is you, you're watching that zone to see if it breaks out to the upside or downside out of this continuation zone. So all patterns, they, they are all important, taken in context of, of the action of that stock. Um, also taking it into context, you know, news about the stock earnings, all that affects this price action movement. And, and re reading these candlesticks allows us to see that movement happen in real time and see what's happening and put our trade in the direction of that trend, whether it's a counter trend or continuation trend or even a sideways trend. Um, any questions so far? Jamario, a couple of things. If we can go back to one of those, so that I think there's the last, um, yeah, in that morning star trade, you were saying that the um, that that week, the week sell off, or in that um, in that that last bottom candle right there, that means that the bulls came in right, and that green, the bulls came in and bought that up. Well, this this is a continuation up. pattern right here. Neither the okay. bulls or the bears are winning that that one but the next one yeah this this is a bearish play here it takes out this entire continuation pattern and it comes over 50 percent of this red move you, you want to break when you get a big move like that you want to break it into halves so a 50 percent move on that red move would be here and that that bullishness comes in and go goes past that 50 percent line yeah okay that's what i was so that that's a strong move that's a very strong move there we get, yeah. we get no, no further down movement, but we get a reversal to the upside. And it takes us past 50% of this, this our biggest red move. And the other thing I wanted to throw out is that when you get these sideways patterns, it does not mean that after the sideways movement is going up. <laughs> it could mean no. that it's about to go down. <laughs> um, so, to and very strongly. Um, so definitely know that. And there are two questions in the chat um one is what is a level two account and what is institutional support this is second one. so uh, a level two account just means you have some uh my book which asked me how many years i've traded options how many trades i do per year um they'll ask you questions like that to see if you can qualify for a level two account um you don't have to pay to get it, it it's just it's, it's a way for them to cover their butts because when you when you trade options you're taking on more risk as a trader they want to make sure you're ready for that or, or that you've done it in the past already. So it's, it's basically a couple of questions they'll ask you. And, and if you pass those questions, they'll up, up your level to allow options trading. Like what, what's some common platforms you got you guys utilize for trading? Please don't say Robin, Robin Hood. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just using E-Trade. Yeah, me, me also, me, me also. So E-Trade, there, there's a way to just request level two access to trade on E-Trade. I forget the actual screen. Um, 
I, I may be able to show you a little later though, but it's, it's fairly easy to do it. Um, I use Thinker's uh, Trait, um, TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim. Looks like Shiba uses Weeble. I never heard of Weeble. Yeah, yeah I, use the same, I use the same one you use, Thomas, like um, TD Ameritrade. Yeah, it's got the same sort of process. You just got to request access to do it. Um, so institutional support, what I mean by that is when institutions make a move in a stock, you see massive bars. You don't see, this isn't, let me see, this, this isn't an institutional move. A big move, that bar could have been institutional. This bar, big bars are institutional uh, bars. And when I show you the charts, I'm going to show you how to, how to look for those moves. That's, that's next. I'll show you that part next. So we'll, we'll start looking at that because that's the main thing you want to look for on a chart. You want to look for institutional moves, institutional support, institutional trends. You want to ride those trends. You, you want to follow the smart money. That's, that's what you really want to do. And that's also the name of a great book, uh, Pete Nigerian, the Nigerian Brothers. It's one of their one of their first books. Any other questions? All right, so now we're going to get out of the presentation and I'll show you how to find these chart patterns in real time. Let's go. There we go. So this is the uh, Power E-Trade platform. This is the paper trading account. Um, looking at everybody's favorite stock, Apple. So what we'll notice, this, this is the standard uh, candlestick chart. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of gaps in between a lot of the price movements. You can, you can trade off a regular candlestick chart, um, but what I prefer to use is the Hakanashi, because what it does is it'll smooth out that chart, that price action, allow you to see a better picture of the trend. So talking about institutional support, um, the footprints of the institutions are your larger bars. Let's go to, this is a daily chart. This is um, August, September, October, November. Can, can you guys see the, the months or is it kind of, is it too small? Can you guys see this? Now that you pointed it out, I can, I can make it out, but it is rather small. I can zoom in a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, so let's start in August here. Um, what you're trying to do when you when you look at a stock that you're thinking about trading or just wanna get a, get a feel for its trend, what you wanna do is look for these big bars. And when you get a big bar, you wanna mark off the range of that bar because your job now is to see if the price action moves to the upside or the downside of that, that range. We get a, a on a, this is, 731 July 31st right before August what we get is a, a nice move out of the range of this previous bar massive move out clears it completely so what that tells us is this is a, a great point to look for a long trade opportunity we've got to move out of this consolidation zone here we're above our moving averages and this one here this is the eight period moving average this is our 13 and this is our 20. As you can see on the daily chart, the price action, it, it hovers above the eight period moving average for the entirety of this uptrend. And this is from July 31st all the way, what's that, September 2nd. That is a massive up move, pretty much the entirety of August. Our job as traders is to get into, into trends like this, get in as soon as we can, and ride that trend for as long as we can. All we, all we did was look for a massive bar that shows massive buying or massive selling. We mark off the range of that bar and we look for a break to the top, to the upside or the downside of that range. We got the upside break here. We look for our trade in that bar and we ride that trade for as long as we can. So we get to this point here. You can clearly see this as a reversal zone. We've got a bar that's it was not really a doji, maybe a spinning top. It's got a, a small bar, a small body, a wick at the top and a wick at the bottom. And we get a, a, a move to, to the downside following that. 
to capitalize off that move, we do the same thing. You want to mark off the zone of this bar and you're looking for a move to the downside or the upside of that zone. We get the down move and it's a large enough move that it's, it's confirmation. If it was a small move, maybe to just to this point here, that that's not a strong enough move for us to jump into that trade because we still got moving averages here. Um, it's, it's just not a strong enough play until we get, until it's a, a big move. If it was a smaller move, you want to wait till a larger confirmation move shows. But if it's large enough, this is confirmation in itself. Look for a, a down trading opportunity. I'll show you how to how to do that. But a lot of guys don't um, recommend shorting stock. I don't either. I don't short stock. I only sell um, puts. And I'll show you how to do that to capitalize off the downward movement. I just want to show how to look out for these reversal patterns right now before we get into the options. So we come down to uh, um, to this point here. I put it down, move there, and we settle up and make a little zone here. And we, we bounce off of this support area. Thomas will talk more about support and resistance a little later, but it's you can see that here. The price actually come down. It finds a area of support where the buyers come in and start buying it. They don't let it get lower than this point, and that picks us up. Now, taking our little zone approach, this can be seen as, as, as a zone area and we get a short break out of that zone. Not strong enough to put on a trade, but it's a break. Um, we get a little sideways movement after that. And this is what day is that? That is 921. So September 21st, we get a short break on the 22nd. And then we get a little sideways movement back into the zone of this bar here. See, the zones really help you to, to see how strong that previous move is and how strong those preceding moves are. If that move is strong enough to take us out of that zone, that's a pretty strong trend. Strong trends tend to get followed up with stronger, stronger follow through, pushing that trend further and further. That's why we want big moves out of a zone before we jump on a trade. Come back into the consolidation and we try to break out again. This is now our zone. Let me zoom in just a little bit. You know, it's kind of hard to see that. This is our zone now. We get a short break, not bullish, not strong enough, but this bar here, that's a nice bar. Sorry. And it takes this, it takes us straight out of this zone of this bar. This bar here takes us out of that zone, wipes all that out completely. That is a great move, great signal to go long on a trade here. And you ride that trade until you start losing respect for your moving averages. Let's zoom out here, which if you went in long here, let me get my markings off. If you went in long here, you don't stop losing respect for your moving averages until about here, which is in October. As a swing trader, you wanna to try to hold trades a couple of days, a week, um, that's, that's, that should be good enough to get a nice, nice profit, a nice move off of a trade. And also, you know, keep in mind that every trade you put on won't work. It's just, a, it's just the way things are. You, you're not going to win every trade. You can't expect to. So let, let's try to look for a situation that where a trade may not have went through. If we go, let's see. This one here, that's, that's a pretty good one there. See, Apple's action is pretty reliable. Um, that move, well, that move's not strong enough. Yeah, Apple is a very reliable company. It's got a lot of institutional support keeping its, its trend strong. So you shouldn't get shaken out a whole lot reading the trends properly on a stock like Apple. I'm gonna do one more before I go to the options portion. Let's do Microsoft, just a little bit of Microsoft. So backing up for about, this is about six months of activity here. Um, what we're seeing is support area for Microsoft here. Bounces off of that zone uh, a, a few times. There's also another one here. These support and resistance areas, Thomas will talk more about that, but they, they, are, they are very important. They can help you frame your trades they can help you frame uh, long-term trades that you can see, you can clearly see the range that is bouncing in. You can clearly see that. And if you're able to get in at the bottom of one of these bounces, throwing your trade in that direction, you can profit 
for a couple of months on a stock like Microsoft or anything that's in a zone like this here. All you got to do, look for your, your massive bars. You mark off the zone of that bar. And you want to trade when you break out of that zone. This zone here from 8.03, so August 3rd, we get stuck in this zone on Microsoft and we stay there until the 26th, the end of the month. That's when we get that break out of that zone and we can put on our long trade to take advantage of this up move in Microsoft. All right, so now let's get back to our presentation and we'll jump into uh, the option portion and I'll show you how to utilize options to take advantage of these moves. Jamarian, this is really good. This is really good for me. Thank you, thank you. So options, when it comes to options trading, options is a very, very deep rabbit hole. You can jump as deep as you want down that rabbit hole and, and just branch out in many directions as you want. But the basics of options would allow you to, to get in and, and really just start getting your feet wet and, and you, can, you can profit off the basics of options trading. You don't have to take it to the extreme and learn every option technique, every strategy out of the sun. You don't need all of that. Learn one or two that works for you that you can that you can you can do repeatedly and, and just focus on that. Um, today we'll just focus on buying options, um, no selling. That's what got us in this whole Wall Street bets situation. Short selling, none of none of that. So what we'll cover, we'll cover what are options, the calls and the puts, which are the basics of options, options versus equities, and then I'll show you how to do this in the platform. It, it's a little bit of reading, not a whole lot, but it's, it's just important we get some of the foundation, some of the, the framework down for what options are and how to, how to use them. So I'll try to go through this. Let's see here. So an option is a contract that gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell the asset at a specified price on or before a certain date. It just means that an option gives the buyer, us as the buyer of that option, it gives us the right to, to buy or sell an asset at a set price and that right, it expires at a certain date. That's, that's all that means there. An option is the contract that gives us the right to buy or sell an asset at a certain date and that, that, that right expires at a certain time. So we use options for income to speculate and to hedge risk. Um, swing trading options is a way to do it for income. Options are known as derivatives because they derive their value from an underlying asset. The option in itself isn't worth anything. Its worth comes from that stock. And the, the, the movement, um, the worthiness of that, that option changes depending on how that stock's price goes up or down. An option, um, a stock option contract represents 100 shares of an underlying stock, but they can be written for other bonds, currencies, and commodities. If a tradable asset has enough um, volume and support, you can trade options for that asset. Um, a lot of new companies and IPOs don't have options for a couple of months because they need more, more, uh, more you know, st stability and support for that, 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 that entity. Once that asset gets enough support, then you can trade options on it. A call option gives the holder the right to buy a stock and a put gives the holder, holder the right to sell. And those two are the, the basics of options. All options are based on calls and puts, a call or a put or a combination of the two. And a call option gives you the right to buy a stock at a set price. A put gives you the right to sell at a set price. Uh, now, this is where it gets a little tricky. So a call gives you the right to buy, put option to sell, but you can buy or sell a call or a put, which means you can buy or sell the option to buy, but you can also buy and sell the option to sell. <laughs> that's, that's where it gets a little, little tricky. Um, for our purposes, we'll only be worried about buying the option to buy or buying the option to sell. When you, when you buy the option to buy, it's a set price that you pay for that option and you can't be risking more than that set price that you paid. It's the same thing for a buying a call or buying that put. 
your your loss is limited to what you paid for that that option. When you sell, your limit your um your risk is unlimited when you sell an option. But we are going to be option buyers. All options have a set strike price, meaning that strike price is the price that you're saying. If you buy a call option for Apple, a hundred call strike. What you're saying is, I, I think Apple's going to be above a hundred dollars by this set date. That's what that strike price means. If you buy a put, what you're saying is you think Apple's going to be under that set price by that expiration date. That is the, the basics of calls and puts, which is the basics of options. It's, it's all about the calls and the puts. It, there's, there's nothing other than options. It's, it's straightforward calls and puts. But the way you categorize and, and, and uh, put them together is what changes your strategies and options and, and things like that. And that's how that rabbit hole can get as deep as you want to go with it. Options versus equities. Options give you leverage in your investing. <clears throat> Excuse me. An option contract can give an investor cheaper exposure to a stock than buying the shares outright. And that can magnify both your profits and your losses if it moves in your direction. So an option controls 100 shares of stock, 100 shares of Apple or whatever stock you, you have the option on. If you were to buy your 100 shares of Apple, it would cost you what's 100 times, 130 right now. Hundred and thirty thousand dollars for hundred shares. No, thirteen thousand. That, that, that's a lot of money to, to get yeah. hundred shares of Apple. Yeah. An option contract allows you a cheaper way to get exposure to hundred shares of Apple. That contract is going to cost you five, maybe six dollars per contract. So what you're doing is when you get an options price, you multiply that by hundred. That's the price of that option. I'll, I'll show you that a little later, but it's it's always cheaper than buying that stock outright. So, um, Jamaria, let's let's jump. Let me jump in because um, I'm reading sort of the gallery, and I feel that um, I, I suspect it. This is where it gets. This is where it gets tough, but not, you know, um, a challenging. So, so if I can try to throw this out, and then and that way, maybe people can learn from this and then ask questions. Um, so, if I believe just using it's important i'm a math major right so everything is uh definitions right we have to be using the same definitions right in order to in order to communicate effectively so call i buy a call option if i believe that the price of the underlying stock is going to be a, above a certain strike price That's it. at a certain date that's it. That is why you will buy a call and you will buy a price. Right. I think it's going to be below that, that price at that right. set date. Well, anytime before that set date. Or anytime before. On or before, right? That's right. It's always on or before. That, that's, so, that's the basics of options. That's so in other words, I if I, I would, let's say for the sake of this discussion, to take it out of this context, I think it's important that um, in, in, in education that we start with concrete and work to abstract, right? So like I would buy, if I believe that um, the value of commercial real estate in DC is going to increase once all these vaccinations get out, then I would buy but I don't necessarily have the money to buy commercial real estate, yeah. right, in DC. So what I might want to do is use a derivative, right, <laughs> of that commercial real estate and say, give me the option to buy, say, two years from now at today's price of whatever. And that, so now let's say, because I fully believe that two years from now, people are going to come back and want to be back in the center again right and they're going to want to live in the center and, and and do live work and play in the city again and so therefore because i believe that i buy this option because i don't have a couple million dollars to put down for commercial real estate in dc so i i buy this derivative for maybe a few thousand dollars and then as the price increases over time it gets above at any time between now and two years from now it gets above what i believe it'll be worth then I have the right to sell 
what I bought at that and get my take my profits. True right. or false? And you would get exponential profits off that because 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 uh, options are it's, it's leveraged over an over, over an individual stock. It's, it's intense leverage over that. Um, a, a price move in that stock. Uh, two dollar price in that stock isn't going to give you the the profits that a two dollar move over that option to give you. That two dollar move for that option to give you an exponential profits over over that stock, and I can, I'll show you that also. But um, that's really important. That's really important. That is the that is the benefit of options. I, but I do think there's some questions in the gallery that aren't being asked, okay. and so I wanted to give them an opportunity to do that if you don't mind, or do you want to just power through? We can any any questions. If I'm going too fast, just, just please let me know. If I want to, when we go over something, let, let me know. Because it, it's, it's a lot. I have a question. So um, I appreciate Thomas like mentioning about um, a call. A call is it called a call order? Is that what we is that would be a safe way to call it? What well, just call it a call it? option. Call option. Okay. So what I wrote down for a call option is that I believe that the price will be around or above a, a strike, like the strike price. Okay, so that's what I understand about a call option. And for a put option, I understand I understand that, that the price will be less than a certain amount. Below the strike of the, point. Of the yeah. other strike price. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I it had to go through my brain. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure I understood. Okay, thank you. Um, you can also use it to um, profit off of, if you have, let's say you got 20, 20 shares of Apple in your portfolio, and you, and you think Apple's gonna be going down and you don't wanna lose too much of your 20 shares, what you can do is buy a put. You got you got the shares here, keep those, but you can buy a put. So you can profit off that downward movement of that stock also. Sell that put, if you sell that put once um, the downward move stops and you start going back up and you still profit off your stock. So people do that a lot to hedge their, their risk, hedge the downside movement of a stock they own in their portfolio. They, they do that a lot. That's a, a big use for options. I think that's the last one. So so say that one more. So so you can is that buying a put or selling a put? Because I don't think we should well, be selling. What 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 you when you buy a put, you gotta sell it to close that trade. To close it. Right. Okay, gotcha. 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 But but sellers, what sellers do, they sell the put to start that trade and they buy it back buy to close that trade. Yeah. yeah. So we want to avoid that. We I think we should avoid that. that. So in summary, you buy a call to benefit off the rise of a stock and you buy a put to benefit off the decline of a stock. This is known as being long a call or a put. So if you're long a call, you bought a call to benefit off that upside movement. If you're long a put, you bought that put to benefit off the down the downward movement. If you were to sell a call or put, it would be known as being short a call or a put, which we, we aren't touching that. Um, so any questions on that? just options in general. The good thing is it's only two parts, just calls and puts. It's not, you know, others that make it complicated even further. It's, it's <laughs> kind of kind of easy. So, so Tosh, why don't you ask your question or your three <laughs> questions? I don't even know how to ask it because it just took me out. It just <laughs> took me all the way out for a second. I think I need to, um, I have to draw things. So let me grab paper and I'll make sense of it visually for a second. <laughs> but that always confuses me. Like it's not, I get it, right? Like when I'm looking at it, I get it. But then somewhere with the buying and selling, I don't know, it, it loses me. But when I figure out my question a little bit more, I'll, I'll ask it. Mm -hmm. I'm getting it though, but I get the concept, but there's something um, about the, the verbiage that loses me, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's, it is a hard concept to wrap your head around. It took me a couple of times, you know, to really get it. And I didn't really get it to a friend of mine from Atlanta. Um, me and him were talking about trading and, and things of that nature. And all he did was trade options and futures. I had looked at it in the past and did, that didn't put in the work to really figure it out until I talked to him. And that made me just put in the work and just just get in there and just figure it out. Um, it, you, you, you guys can get it. It just take a, it'll take a little bit of time, but it, it, it's just two parts, just calls and puts by a call, you know, for uh, upward movement and a put for a down movement. Um, yeah. 
So what I want to do now, I want to show you guys how um, how to break down buying an option and what you would what you would pick as far as buying that option. Let's see. So on any platform you utilize, it's going to be what's called an options chain. And all it does is it just shows the price of all those options available for that asset. It shows you the, the date, expiration date for those options. And it shows your strike prices here. All option chains look the same. They show pretty much the same information. Um, your date, your strike price, and then you've got, this is actual chain here showing that the many different um, prices you can pick and, and trade from. But before we even jump on an option, what you got to do is figure out the price action you're seeing and what you want to do for that price action. Like we're looking at Microsoft again here. What we see for Microsoft, we see it as a pretty big move up, but it's starting to form a top here. Starting to form a top there. So what, what you want to do is go ahead and mark that off. We've got a top forming. Um, we haven't reversed off that top yet, but we're getting ready to it looks like. Also, we're seeing red on our MACD also. And this shows us that the buying pressure is picking up for Microsoft. We don't know how long, how strong it's going to be or when it's going to hit, but we can see it approaching. Um, We've gone over this before uh, with in previous calls, but can you, for the sake of this call, quickly um, go over what the MACD is? Um, the moving average conversion diversion, it, it shows the, the, the buying pressure versus the selling pressure on, on an asset that you're tracking. When the red line is over the, the white line, the bears are totally in control of that asset. And usually they'll bring that price action down. We've got, we've got red on our MACD and we're down below the red line here. And you can see the, the downward move in the stock there to correspond with that movement. It helps you to, to pick out the declines on the stock um, and also to see how long that decline is gonna be. As you can see, we're, we're almost spot on. get rid of our MACD that takes us down to what I call the underwater state here. And it started pretty much with the price action on the chart. And we didn't come out of that until we get this big green bar here. So it's just a way to, for you to gauge the buying pressure versus the selling pressure to see who's winning that fight. Because every one of these bars is a fight between the bulls and the bears. Um, and whoever's winning that fight is the direction that that stock is moving. The, the bulls won from here. They started to win here. Um, this, this bearish pressure wasn't even enough to pull the stock down much at all. We, we were at, that's a high, um, 227.18. And this bearish pressure only brought us down to, to here. It's not, it's not, it's not much at all. That's, that's weak bearish pressure there to 213. So when you see something like that, that is a great opportunity to look for a swing trade, an options trade out of this, this weakness zone, out of this, this sideways area here. That is a great trade to look for. It's, it's the main one I look for. I look for weak MACD pressure on a stock. When I, when I see that, net, that MACD bring us down, I'm looking for a break out of that zone to the upside. I'm, I'm waiting for it. You, you wait a week, two weeks, maybe half a month, but you, you wait for that move out of this range and take advantage of it. Another thing is, uh, if you'll see this in your trading, um, is that a mat, there's trading um, indicators called crossovers. And a MACD crossover is what he's talking about. When that upward pressure come then it goes from being under this zero line this white line down here is a zero line and every bar is underneath that and so that pressure the buying upward pressure causes a crossover and if you have a macd crossover to the upside that's a bullish um signal and you see that in the um reflected you know of course first in the price action of the actual stock and then the averages follow that and that's this is a bullish signal yeah, these indicators are lagging indicators. They read the previous price action a little bit before um, actual price action, like Thomas said. The price action was the most recent information on that stock. Your indicators are a little bit lagging behind that. And he, he's correct. This is the bullish crossover you want to look for. This is the bearish crossover when the red overtakes the white. But that's, that's what you want to look for 
when you're reading through your chart patterns and looking for something to trade. You want to look for the strongest trend. Let me get these off here. You want to look for the strongest trend. You want to go in direction of that strong trend and you want to ride that for as long as you can. So let's assume that this is the top for Microsoft and it's getting ready to go down. What I'm, what I'm seeing is the last, let's see, Thomas is going to talk more about support and, and resistance, but we're going to just mark off our, our line here. The top of this range can be seen as our, our closest support level if it were to drop down. So what, you, what you're looking for is a drop from this high to this area here first for Microsoft. Uh, as soon as this, this, this bearish crossover happens, that's what you're looking for. And to uh, prepare for that, what you can do is put on a put trade. You buy a, put, a long put to profit off of this downward movement. So if I was, I was happy with that movement and I wanted to put on that trade, what I would do, come to my options here now, the option chain, let's get all this off. I'm gonna pop that chart out so I can still see it. If it'll let me. Well, even if it doesn't, what we'll do, yeah, it's not going to let me look at it like I want to. So what, what we'll do, we'll mark off the high of this here is 241. We're looking to profit off a drop from 241 to our support zone here at 225. So what you want to do, that's going to be called a put, a long put. And how, how this works here, let's go to 242. This is the price of uh, Microsoft right now. We're trying to profit off a down move of Microsoft below the 240. Um, the price of my option is gonna tell me how far I've got to go to break even on that stock. If I was to buy the, the, the 242.50 for 460, that option is gonna cost me, for, for 10, 10 contracts, it's gonna cost me $4,000. Whenever you're trading options or anything in general, you don't want to go big on your initial push into that trade. You want to start small just in case you are wrong. So what I would do is I bring that down to maybe two, two contracts. It's only going to cost us $8.90. And since it's, it's $4.47 per contract, that means if uh, Microsoft drops below um, $242 minus four, what's that, $240, $238? If it drops below $238, we make profit on this trade. And you're able to see that from the snapshot analysis. Can you, I don't know if you guys can see this part here. Can you guys see these numbers? It may be a little bit small, not sure. Yeah, the numbers are kind of small, but we can see like the visual. Is there a way to zoom in on here, um, Thomas? May not be. What it does, it'll, it'll show you um, the profit potential as the price of your stock goes down below your point. If it goes down to a point of 236, this profit, this um, option makes us 639 just for those two contracts. Also on the flip side of that coin, if it goes above our point, it shows how much you can lose also. So what, what your job is trying to find a great trading opportunity is to try to have a good buy-in point for your, for your stock. You don't wanna have to pay too much for that option um or chase a price point for too long um the price you get in ties into your profit point for that for that that option let's see here if i can show yeah so the price of your option for a put what you're what you're saying is if if it's costing me 340 for that my break-even point is going to be three dollars and forty um 240 minus 340. That's the profit point for a for buying a long put. If you if your platform doesn't allow you to see it actually plot it out, that's how you can calculate your break-even point for your option. For a long put, you subtract the option you pick, your your um your strike price from the price of that option. And that tells you how low it's got to come down for you to profit off of it. For a long call, it's the exact opposite. The option strike you pick. Uh, we're at 242 now, so Microsoft is at. 
if we were to buy the 240 option, which is telling us that if it goes above 245, we're profit off of that trade. You just add the price of your option to that strike price for a long call and you subtract it from your strike price for a long put. I, I know this is a little bit confusing because this is the first time a lot of you have seen any, any kind of um, presentation on option. It, it is a, it's a thick subject to get through. Um, it's, it's just a matter of you getting into a paper trading account and just trying it out. Um, and your platform may look different than mine. It may not give you a snapshot showing you the profit and loss as your stock moves. But to, to gauge your initial initial point, it's going to be for a long put to the, to uh, benefit off a decline. What you're doing is you're subtracting what you're paying for that that option from the strike price. For a long put, what you're doing is you're adding the price of your option to that strike price. If it goes above your loan, your, if it goes above that price, you make profit. Um, I, I know this is kind of kind of difficult, guys, but I can't really show you the trade happening in real time because what you got to understand is when when the market is open, all these prices are changing. None of this is going to be static in a real trade. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get into your trade at a good point. You're not trying to chase it and pay too much because the more you pay on a long call, the more your stock has to move for you to profit. The more you pay for a loan put, the more your stock has to drop for you to profit. So it's, it's really a matter of sticking close to knowing how much you want to put on each trade. That's why I say you, you want to have at least 2,500 to 5,000 to start. Um, and you want to start small with your first trade, um, 500 to maybe $1,000. That, that, that tells you if, you're, if your limit was $1,000, you want to start with two $500 options. If your your limit was hundred dollars, this is really good. This is so. This is very rich, um, and and uh, I really appreciate it. Like, it's good. Like one thing, I don't even know. I can't. I can't say what TD Manager to Think or Swim does because I. But that that break even analysis that you did with the graph and plotted it out. That was that's something that I would if I were to get into this um, options trading, I would definitely look for because that's that's powerful. Um, the thing I wanted to conceptually always like try to create a concept and see if we can create dialogue around the concept and maybe more understanding if, if we don't have understanding um, is right now I'm long the actual stock in uh, in, in till rate. Okay. Right. My average price is under nineteen dollars, eighteen something. Right. Till rate at one point last week was like twenty eight over twenty eight dollars, I believe. Um, so, but I think that for the next, um, until some more news comes out, until they announce earnings, it could drift downward, right? It definitely just had drifted downward from 28. So it would be really cool if I, if I, you know, knew how to do this, right? I could, I don't want to sell the stock because I want to, I want to hold that until they really change these laws, because I think it could double or triple, or maybe even quadruple in the next year or two. Right, so how, I always want to think it's going to drop. Like, what's your time frame for thinking it's going to drop? What, what do you What do you think? Well, it, it started Friday, <laughs> right? It, I was thinking that once it hit 28, 29, it had gotten pretty stretched, and so I was like, man, I really wanted to start putting on. I don't want to get rid of it. I know I want to stay long, but how can I? And so this put right is a great way for me to take advantage of um, any downward pressure you know, near term while I'm waiting for the next, the move higher. So I, I, I really appreciate what you what you did. That That's something that, I'm just trying to give a practical example of how you might want to not get rid of the underlying asset, but you do want to take, but you don't necessarily want to take the whole ride down with it. And if you do, I'm okay with taking the whole ride down, but my account value is going down as well. So with this put <laughs> option, it gives me a way for my account value to continue to rise, right? While I'm, or at least break even while I'm waiting on this, the um, underlying asset to uh, to make another move higher. So, dope. Well, that, just that's, totally that's dope. Good, Thomas. And what you would do, man, is just just wait till you get a break above um, Friday's action, um, and then I will look for that that move because you are starting to get red, but it, it isn't really weak yet. But it it would be easy to do that, man. Um, because it's sitting at 25 now, 
Mm -hmm. All you do is just come to your options. And what I would say is, um, as far as the time frames, you want to go two weeks or maybe a month out from your current date to give you time for your option play to work. Um, mm -hmm. So this this expires next week. This expires the week after next, and then you got one that expires in the end of February. The further you go out, the more it's going to cost, and the more it's got to move for you to profit. Mm -hmm. But you're safer because it gives you a longer time frame for you to be right. So just let's just say we're going for the the 26, the February 26, six uh, option. And you know the price is at 25 right now. So if we were to buy a 25 put, 25 put costs three dollars and fifty cent. So that means three dollars below twenty-five dollars when you start making profit off of that put. If you want to go a little bit higher, let's go. I, I would wouldn't recommend going above six dollars per option because it's it's got to move too much for you to profit off of that. Try and the other price. reason I wouldn't want to do that, uh, I don't know if I'm on mute or not. Uh, um, the other reason I don't want to do it is because on the 23rd they announce earnings, <laughs> right? So I don't want to be in that put option if because it could work against me too, um, oh, yeah. really oh, badly yeah. if they if they beat. Um, so, however, that could be a place for me to. That if they if they miss and you know it's the the world is falling and they don't have a good call, that could be a great put play. But um, at that time, but I do not I can't go past the twenty second to be honest. <laughs> Let's right? look at the twenty first. Let's look at the twenty first. <laughs> it's the same same situation though. It's the twenty. It's that twenty five, almost twenty six right now. You mm -hmm. want to profit off a decline of till rate. So let's go mm -hmm. a, a little bit above it. We don't want to pay more than six hundred. So let's go to about. So the 28 puts are 440 a piece. And what they're telling us, if it goes below 2370, we make money off of this put. So that's yeah. 440 times 100, right? Which is $440, right? That's what you're saying? It, that's it, what it, it would cost me. Not, yeah, in real life, that's what it would cost you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The option costs you 4300 for 10 options, for 10 contracts. I wouldn't recommend getting 10. I would say- Yeah, just do one. One or two, one, yeah, that's, that's going to cost okay. 860. That's gotcha. going to give you downside protection if it does go down. And this this will show you to give you a little snapshot of how much you can make depending on how far it goes down. So, yeah, break it down for me. I you might put this trade on tomorrow. If it goes down to 2224, you get 413 off that contract. So, say if it goes down to where 22. 2208, you get 438 for that, that, um, that options trade. Gotcha. Gotcha. So some things you want to, you don't want to spend too much for an option. You don't want to spend, you know, uh, too less for it. You want to stay close to 500 if possible. Um, what, I, what I found in my experience, and I've been trading options for four years, um, been doing it professionally for one. What I've found is five gives you a safe, risk to reward um, scenario. If you can get something cheaper than that, you know, you, you can go for it, but you just stay close to five if possible. Um, if you wanna wanna dabble in trade into uh, options, I wouldn't pay anything above that because it's, it's gotta move too much for you to profit. Mm. Unless you're looking at something, you know, next year or further down the line. And uh, as you can see, options go out all the way, all the way to next year. Gotcha. Wow, good I stuff. Time, I'm, uh, you took. Uh, first of all, let me get a gauge. Um, so, who here has questions that they want to ask Jamario first? And second, do you have the energy to go into the other side, or do you want to punt? I'll let the group decide. I don't have any additional questions. Um, I don't know if I have the energy to keep going. I feel like I feel like while this was already so challenging, I feel like I need to go look at my stuff and actually try to put this in play for a second before I add on, but I'm down with whatever the group wants to do. I don't have any questions and I'm kind of neutral. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any additional questions either. Um, 
I do. I, I honestly like I like what um, Natasha was mentioning about kind of going in and looking at what you currently have, what we currently have, and then kind of taking what we just learned and look at if we wanted to use it to, you know, put an option in for our stock, like being able to kind of like see what happens. I also, um, I don't have E-Trade, I have TD Ameritrade, and I'm wondering now going into that app, if there's a, a page very similar to what you showed, Jamario, about how you can see like how much money you would make based on putting in an option for the stock. So that's something I, I definitely would like to look at to see if we have that as an option. So. Good luck get calling them and figuring that out. Um, Cause I'd be on hold for an hour these days, yeah, thanks I to wanna... Wall Street bets. But um, <laughs> <No. laughs> the um, yeah, I mean, I was on the call or on a call waiting for them for an hour, and but but then just last night, and the software ended up starting to work again. So I just got off the call, but I I was on the call for over an hour before it, it worked. So. But what I'm um, hearing you say is I should move over to E-Trade. <laughs> I, have, I have problems too. I wouldn't say yeah, that. I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I don't know about that. Everybody, the Wall Street Bets has put a lot of pressure on all the brokers, um, online brokers. So um, the only challenge I feel with um, going forward without going, I'm not presenting new information. I'm only presenting stuff that we've talked about generally before, maybe Sheba, but, um, you know, um, might not have seen it, but he, Jamaria went over some of the concepts and I think support and resistance is something that I feel like you, uh, you really want to get out of this. Um, just, and so perhaps I can breeze through the concepts, um, because if you were to go back and watch this video, you still might not have and I'm not saying that I'm the definitive work on support and resistance, but I feel like just having a complete knowledge of completing the video might be helpful if you want to go back to it. Um, so let me just, um, let me try to power through that. And then, um, then you can go off and try to put all of those concepts into whatever your next trade is and then we can come back and pick up from there next month. So if, if you don't mind. You can always reach out to us, you know, on, offline about any questions sure. you have. Sure. Um, is that okay, y'all? Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna um, reclaim the host, Jamario. Great job. Let's 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 clap it up. Jamario did an amazing, that was really good. I, I actually learned a lot. Um, I didn't want to take so much time. I'm sorry about that. It's, I, it's hard not to. It's hard not to, and um, Perfect so time. don't ever, don't ever be sorry for taking time to educate. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so let me reclaim, and then um, let me share my screen. Please tell me, what do you see? Ownership is a lifestyle. My oh, man. Okay, great. So this is kind of an overview of what we did last month. This this part, which I'm gonna do it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's just swing trading versus day trading, really quickly, high level. And by the way, uh, Jamario, is it okay if you put you? I'm gonna try to create a Dropbox for the group. Okay. I try. I'm going to create a Dropbox for the group, and. I shouldn't be advertising somebody's platform for free, but I'm going to create a, a storage place for the group. And could you put your deck there? Are you willing to put your the deck you created there? Sure can. And I'll put my deck there. And um, okay. So basically, swing trading, as Jamario mentioned, is just anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks to a couple of months um, to take advantage. Um, I think he showed the Apple example. It pretty much went up the whole month of August, right? So that's, you wanna to try to ca capitalize on as much of the swing as possible. Obviously just thinking about a swing, right? You wanna get as much of the upside of that swing as possible. So what you don't wanna do is buy at the top of that swing because <laughs> you only got a long wait. So I can assure you, you don't wanna do that. Day trading um, is just 
basically opening and closing the position within the same day. Um, I'm not going to read to you because I'm going to post these slides, but that's the gist of that. I use the 50 day moving average, sometimes the EMA, sometimes the SMA. EMA just means exponential moving average. SMA is simple moving average. But the most important, we both, what Jamea and I definitely agree on is a 200 day, uh, and I, the 100 day is really to use a lot, but the 200 day is used a lot. The 50 day is used a lot, right? And I, we talked about this before. The 50 day moving average, if it crosses above, the 200 day moving average, that's called a golden cross, right? They have a name for that. And if it moves below the 200 day moving average, that's called a death cross. So um, those two averages are very important in, in trading. And often they end up acting as areas of support and resistance, which is why I wanted to go over those things and talk about it. Because, you know, for, stocks tend to pick gain uh, momentum or gain support and, and pick up resistance around familiar places, familiar numbers. Like if, right, I was talking about Tilray, as it gets closer to 30, I knew it was going to pick up some resistance, right? So familiar numbers, 25, 30, they start to just, you know, it's just a psychological thing because as, as Jamario said, um, the stocks themselves don't have any psychology with them. They're not complex. It's the humans, it's the human behavior that makes the price action complex. So um, I, I typically, I really want you to understand that 50 day and a 200 day, you know, we, we just talked about it. Um, 200 days about us oh, about 40 weeks. So that's about a trading year, right? So you'll notice that stocks that haven't been trading publicly for an entire year, um, they won't have a, or, or 40 weeks, they won't have a 200 day moving average, right? So it takes the 200 days to get your first point, data point. So um, so it's really important um, to know these different averages and be aware of them. I happen to use moving average envelopes. I don't know how popular that is and and and, and how many different people use it. It's popular enough for the tools to, to provide it for you, but some people use them, some people don't. Um, essentially what an envelope is, is you take the average of the stock and then you have a percentage above and a percentage below. And it creates a nice little channel or envelope that the stock tends to trade within or in and out of. And I'll show you some examples um, in, in coming up. But I use that again as support and resistance. And they tend to act like areas of support and resistance during uptrends and downtrends. So I'm going fast because we've been on the call a while. So I want to make sure that uh, we get through this quickly, and I, I will post the um, that. And you, if you notice, this I'm not making any of this up. I'm not being <laughs> inventive here. This is all on Investopedia. It's publicly available. So uh, the goal is just for you to to have the knowledge. So um, this is what I, I created for just today. So support and resistance basically is not an exact number, right? It's not like oh. $207.38 is going to be support and you can just buy there because that was the last low. You cannot do that, right? It's it, And Jamario said it perfectly, it's an area of support, right? They can trade below that or it can go way below that, right? It can break through and it may not act as support if, if something's going on. But um, so, and the same for resistance, right? There are areas of support and areas of resistance. You're trying to when it gets down to those levels, you're trying to figure out, okay, is this the beginning of a new trend? And you use these indicators that some of the indicators that Jamari was talked about with the patterns and the price bars or, or candlesticks or with the MACD or a multitude of other indicators that you can use to determine if this is truly support. Um, so support occurs when the downtrend is expected to pause due to concentration of demand. So you start to see, and a lot of times what you'll see when a stock has hit support is you'll start to see that sideways trend that Jamario talked about, right? So you get a few days or price bars or candlesticks um, where the stock will kind of trade in that area. And when you see me come in the group and post, hey guys, I think da 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 da, da it's because I've recognized that, okay, there's gonna be a reversal of trend or, or whatever. Um, so um, 
I will give you, let's see. Here's a good point. Market psychology plays a major role, right? It's not anything to do with the stock. It's just human behavior, right? Um, we, we're making the market. Um, again, last bullet, support and resistance areas. Not, it's not a thing you calculate and then that's it. And then you buy or sell at that point. It's, it's, it's an area. Um, so um, I'm going to go over some quick examples. If you remember, this is what I put in the group chat um, a few days ago, I think last week, sometime, maybe last Monday. And it was this is Salesforce, CRM. And I had gone in and I really, this is a really good example. So this sort of orange line here is your 200 day moving average. And this light blue line is your 50 day moving average. And these purple lines are the envelopes. So check out what's happening. So you've had a, a huge increase since last March or whatever. That's about when that's it, when that is. And then it broke down. It came up to this, it went up to this area, which is 284.50, fell back down inside the envelope, bounced a little bit, came back and then hit a new area, a, a low, a lower high right at 267, came down to this 228 level and bounced right back to that same high and, and basically failed again. And we start seeing a series of lower highs, that, start, that means your, your, your uptrend is breaking down, right? And, <clears throat> and then it fully dropped, but look where it found support. Right here at the, the 200 day moving average, right around this area. And it started to pick back up. And then for the last, for like days, it had been sort of wedged between this 200 day moving average and the 50 day moving average. And it's consolidated. And this day, the end of that day is when I posted this graphic in the group. And I said, once it breaks above this point, which is now resistance, this 50 day, um, the next area of resistance would be 255, which is you know, almost 30 points higher. Um, so what you'll see, and another thing you should show, and Jamaria was getting to this, areas of resistance, once they're broken through, tend to become areas of support, right? Once the uptrend begins and it goes through resistance, that area will most likely be the area of support on a, on a, on a downswing. So that's something to remember. And he, he alluded to that. So I want to give him credit for it. Uh, so watch what happened the very next day. Boom, broke through. The very next day after I posted it. And it's now 10 points higher than where it was just the day before. <laughs> right. So like this is really important that you pick up on these things um, because that's a non-trivial amount of money <laughs> right, right here. Um, so, and there's still time on this one. Um, I believe they report earnings this month around the 23rd or somewhere in there. So this, that's, a, I just wanted to show you that these areas of support and how that was acting like resistance. And if you can see, if you kind of visualize it, this price was wedged between the 50 day and the 200 day. And it just broke through that wedge and it, it's, it's gone. <laughs> so you should definitely look into that. Um, uh, again, so now this is Boeing. Um, I have not posted this in the group, but I'm really a believer in this going forward. And you can see the similar setup stuck here between the 50 day and the 200 day. Um, you have, it came down here to about 192 and it came up to the 50 day moving average and look what happened. It broke down Friday. It's so we'll see, it has a little longer to go, but this is going to be this 192 to 208 or two, what is that 215? 192 to 215 range is going to be your sideways trend until it breaks through that. On one side or the other, I can't say that it's going to do the same thing as CRM, 
but it, it has to break through the 192 level and, and probably down here below this uh, 200 day moving average, which is rising every day. So what I think is going to happen is the 200 day is going to continue to rise up into this 192 level and then the wedge will continue to, to squeeze until it breaks to the upside. I think the stock is going higher. Um, so I'm going to be dabbling in after I get finished with my with GM and uh, Uber, which I'm in right now, and they uh, report earnings next week. So uh, you might want to look into that at those as well. Another one I want to show is Square. Look at this uptrend. Beautiful. <laughs> this is this is the kind of thing that makes you. This is this is heresy. It makes you want to kick yourself. Okay. So I saw this stock around seventy and was like, oh, it, it can't keep going. <laughs> <laughs> It'll turn out. It's gonna pull back, and it has made a pure fool of me. Um, Michelle in the cello style. So I. I'm, these circles I want to show you. Look, look at in a, in a strong uptrend. Um, and what I've noticed is that when you have about five full, I use price bars. He used candlesticks. That's just what I learned on. Um, they're a little different in that the price bar, the left tick is always the open. The high of the bar, the top of the bar is always the high. The low of the bar is always a low, and the right tick is always closed. So it's just you'll see this um, in in charting um, software. It'll be like OHLC, right? That's just open, high, low, close. Um, and so when you have like five full days above the envelopes, that's usually a sign that a, a strong trend is on the way. Um, and so when you get really strong trends like this, I mean, this is insane then the, the bottom of that envelope tends to act like support. And you can see where I've circled, where it's pulled back, come there and bounce, pull back and bounce, pull back and bounce. And here the yellow represents it kind of fell through the envelope, but look how strong that 50 day moving average is acting as support. Boom, hung out here, gone again. Broke through a little, but popped right back up. It's just, and now it's back to the, um, the moving average envelope. And then here, this just happened. And I'm sorry, I should have put this in a group. I was watching it. I saw it happen and I just, I just didn't have time, but I knew PayPal and Square were gonna pull the trigger in PayPal. I mean, look at this, this is this this is around 199 to like, look, it came down to 200, under 200. I remember seeing it under 200 that day and then it bounced back. And I mean, this is, this is a 40 point move in the last, two weeks so um and i'm sitting here watching it like if i need all everybody's money so i can <laughs> trade these stocks i'm dying uh, right i saw it happening in front of me and, it, and i'm anyway so this is chewy this is my last one yet another example of just pure your 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 moving average envelope acting as support um, on an uptrend not as strong an uptrend as Square, but Chewy is the pet company or whatever. I believe this is Chewy. Um, this ticker is CHWY. And each time, like here, it came down to the 50 day, but strong uptrend, look how strong that uptrend is, way above the moving average envelope, pulls back, stops at the bottom level and goes back up again. Pulls back again, does not come back down here, stops at the bottom level, and starts to just move again. So I just wanted to show you just different concepts um, of how support and resistance is being used in practice on the stock side. I don't, I have not yet ever in life traded an option, um, but but Jamario is really <laughs> influencing me <laughs> to, to do that put trade next week. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, I, this is really, really, really important. I'm not just magically guessing and putting stocks in the in the group for no reason. Like this is what I'm looking at, right? And I didn't show you the MACD. We have gone over the MACD, but since he did it, as I'm glad he kind of went over it. That MACD is really huge. The MACD crossovers happen, you know. I mean, who knows what the MACD crossover was in these cases? But this probably went underwater. 
and then, you know, found support here and then started to come back up. And so you just want to get as, as much of the swing as possible. That's all we're doing. Um, so I think this is my last, yeah. So um, questions, comments, criticism, concern, you guys saw man, Why you didn't jump on that square, man? You, you, you got square? <laughs> no, I did listen, I looked at it last year and I was like $70, it had tripled from March. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I missed it. I went for a pullback thinking that it, the market was just going, who knew? I mean, it, it tripled again. It tripled hey. again. So, you know, and then I saw it at 199, but I was already in Tilray pretty heavy and I did yeah. pretty well in Tilray so far. So I'm not mad, but I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm salty. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't, I can't buy all the stocks that I didn't see, right? I, and or I could, but I would, you know, I'm buying one share, two shares, right? So, or fractional shares. So it's like you can't win them all, you know, but that's why I posted in the group. Every stock I post in the group, I don't own. I tell you when I own it, right? Because yeah. you should have full disclosure. People should tell you that they're promoting the stock, that they're selling their book, you know, they're talking their book. So if I own it, I say full disclosure, the, I own these stocks, you know what I'm saying? So you won't feel like I'm telling you to buy it and I'm pumping dump, you know what I mean? So, um, but it, it I can't buy them all, you know. I mean, if I had all, all y'all's money, <laughs> Sheba would let me hold something. Then I could then uh, do it. Money's funny. <laughs> yeah. So then I could do it. So, yeah. So, what questions, comments, concerns, like feedback um, as we wrap up? Well, I will say you you were right. I'm glad you went through it because it did. It was a good compliment to the information that went. Um, that was shared before and it and it made sense it wasn't too heavy that was good, good. you're right yeah before yeah and this is the underlying asset if the things that i showed you aren't happening then his option trades aren't gonna work right 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 that's a derivative so right. you this has you have to really in my opinion know this stuff in order for you to say okay and i'm gonna trade the option Mm -hmm. Because most of the options traders that you see on TV, they also have un ho holdings sometimes in the underlying stock that they have, or, or sometimes they don't. They don't always own the underlying stock if they're trading options, but sometimes they do, right? Like some, they have, you'll hear them say, oh, Apple is one of my core holdings. They're not going to sell Apple. Why? Because Apple, for one, first of all, pays a hell of a dividend, right? For a, text, a growth stock, they pay a really good dividend. Um, and so why would I sell it when I can take advantage of that dividend, whether it goes up or down? So, but if it's going down, I don't just want to, my, the value of my account to go down. Right. So maybe I'll buy, I, I, I'll buy some puts against it. Right. Um, and so that's what they're doing in the, in the cohort for the core core holdings. And then for things that they just want to make a quick buck, they buy calls or whatever or buy puts and they of course sell and I don't get it. I don't, I told y'all in the very first meeting we had not to get involved in short selling right now. And, and you've now seen with, you know, <laughs> the, how short selling can get you in serious trouble. And these are professional billion dollar funds that got punished by some kids, some people, folks on the forum. Um, so that's why I said that a few <laughs> months ago. Um, and so if y'all don't have anything else, I mean, this, this was it. What did you enjoy it? Did it was it worthwhile? Let's have some feedback and close out. Um, I wanted to share that. Um, I wanted to thank you, Jamario and Thomas for giving us some of your tassel knowledge that you have in your heads and also putting it into a PowerPoint presentation so that we have a visual to be able to see what's going on in your heads because you guys are two brilliant individuals. Um, so I think that like feedback, direct feedback that I'd like to give um, for our monthly meetings is that I think that it's helpful to have a presentation or a visual to actually be able to see and have like, here's what we're going to talk about here. Here are the touch points, you know, and then having these gentle pauses 
during the presentation to have questions or to give feedback. So I, I really like, I like the format that we did today. Yeah, we're working on format. Thank you for that feedback. You're what do y'all want to see next? Like, what do y'all want to want to hear or learn about? Great question. I'll have a question. Did you learn anything today? <laughs> right? Yeah. I know I did. Oh, right? For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. No doubt. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, I think, yeah, what's I next? Think Mario actually, uh, to be honest, like, I always had trouble with call and put. And I felt like you talk, you try, you 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 talk to me like I was five years old, which may help it make sense. Like just being brutally honest. Like I need to be spoken to like I'm a kid when it comes to this. And I think that you did a really good job of trying to explain it in a way. And then Thomas followed up with, you know, well, let me conceptualize it for you because he's, you know, he's also a math brain and a teacher and logical, which I appreciate. So that was really helpful too. Yeah, I was second that. I think um, I just you said it. You said it perfectly. Like it, it literally breaking it down and then adding it to a concept we could relate to like it's current mm -hmm. um, really helped understand it. Cause as you know, once you got into it, I said, let me tell you up front, these calls and puts, honey. They get a sister kind of loopy. You know, I understand it conceptually, but something gets lost in there. But you know, um, the way that it broke down, it really made it make more sense. I had to draw it out, but I'm good. So thank you all again for your patience, especially. Sheba, I know you got something to say. You always got something to say. Not, not much, but it was a lot of good information and I'll see what I can do with it this week. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. I have to really like put things into action immediately after hearing it when it's something that's a little... Um, that I know is a little confusing for me or else I'll forget, right? So I think just this week, the last couple of weeks, I haven't had much time to, to deal with it or pay much attention, but this week I have to put it into action right away. Yeah, I might need you to coach me through that put trade. I, I'm really considering pulling that trade because um, <laughs> that would be, I might be rolling around laughing so hard <laughs> with that, if I pull that off, I I don't I might quit everything and just do this full time. <laughs> like, like that's that is fascinating. So yeah. So what do y'all want to learn next? What should we come? Should we go back into options and then I give the underlying, you know, what that means from a stock perspective, the, the uh, underlying asset, or what would you like to learn? How where y'all want to go with it? We can also like frame option trades on uh, companies you guys want to talk about also. Like mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. do things like that. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe we can kind of help develop what the next topic is based on what each of us put into action over the next week or something. Like the things that kind of confuse us or you know, as we're doing it, are there questions that come up for each of us that we all are kind of like, yeah, what about that? Maybe we can kind of see how it goes for us and kind of develop where we go next together maybe yeah. I, I think so i think what we can do is if you put it into practice whether it's options or just buying the stock right yeah putting this support and resistance using the macd how do you set up your charts to i think one time we went over i think it was just tosh and Melita. we we went over like stockcharts.com and how to set that up so that you can view the view all your indicators and what indicators i use um, so that's another thing that we should go over is, um, Jamario, is what indicators we actually use besides just general support and resistance and um, patterns. But like, there's other indicators that I use that I think um, are helpful. Um, so, but in the meantime, in between time, as you're putting things into practice, hopefully this over the coming weeks, if you put it in a group, then we'll know what questions that and what issues are being had and we can address it there, but we can also, it helps us create content. Otherwise we're just creating content on our own without sure. really knowing sure. you know, what people care about, right? So. Um, Thomas, I actually like speaking about that, like this is an idea and it, you know, it, it's gonna be completely subjective to the person, but I thought that it might be really cool if we found 
maybe a stock as in the, in the group that we could all say, okay, we're gonna all buy maybe just one share. And then we can practice doing options with it where maybe, you know, we, you know, like what Jamari was saying, like, hey, you know, if you're gonna do options, like make sure that, you know, you have $500 that you know that, hey, if I lose it, okay, if I don't, like, I mean, if, I, if I'm fine, I'm fine, but it'll at least kind of give you like that emotional fortitude to be comfortable with doing the, doing the, the options as well. So that's just a, just an idea. I mean, if, you know, if people wanted to even do that as well. I like that idea. I like that. Yeah. I mean, cause it's I'll like, only, you can only stand on the, scare the, uh, the, the, the diving board for so long and look at the water <laughs> until you're just like, do I jump in or no, you know, so. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry. I think, that, I think she's trying to set up one of these Wall Street forums where we all buy <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. It's practice, though. She, she you know, practice. I don't want. <laughs> I don't need to get in trouble, but I do think that's a good, good work. Um, if we all decide that we're gonna, um, I I think we talked about before. Like, hey, people are putting recommendations. Big up to Jamario for that silver. Did y'all see when he put the silver mm -hmm. recommendation in the group, and then, like couple days it took like two or three days and then i started hearing them on cnbc saying hey silver right uh -huh. is 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 going up and um the day or two after i put the crm in their salesforce on fast money uh was it fast money no the halftime report one of the these so-called experts was like i think crm I'm, I'm long crm and i was like that's when i knew it was gone but they had already made the move and that i had called so i think when we're putting these in there let us know if you're take first of all, try to take advantage of them. Look at it, right? Like, and then if you don't know how to take advantage of it, ask how to take advantage of it and then take advantage of it, right? Um, react to what we're saying so that when we come back and have this, you could talk about what should I do? Because, okay, Jamario, I bought Salesforce at 238 or 228 and it's now up to 238. I bought it at 230. It's, or it's at 255, what should I do? Jamari might say, you know what? It might be worth, you know, after a couple of days, if it starts to break down, you get some red in that MACD, you might want to go ahead and buy some puts, mm -hmm. right? Right, Th then the group, then this complements. Sure. It's sort of like a virtuous cycle. So yeah. it's, I don't know that it's necessary that we all buy the same stock. I don't mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to that. But I think what is necessary is that you are taking advantage of the stocks that we um, people are recommending, not that you or whatever you have, that you ask questions around that so that it helps us create content. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're just being creative. Or trying to, it's hard for me to bring down everything I've been reading about and, and trying out for 20 years into an hour or 45 minutes to give to somebody else. That's super difficult for me anyway. Yeah. yeah. So are you kind of saying that based on what you're sharing like do you feel like okay so like for example like from the call that jamario and you and i had the last time amd was a stock that he that he mentioned and tilray is something that you mentioned in the group and like i bought some of them both of them and i look at them and i'm like oh okay they were right and then i start to look at the charts and things of that nature so would you want something like that with saying hey based on you know, Jamario's recommendation, like like something that was posted in the group, like I purchased AMD and I noticed that as soon as I put in, I noticed the trend was blah, blah, blah. Like, do you want kind of like more context like that so that when you make the recommendation and some, and like someone acts on it, they actually show like in real time, like this is what happened as a result of it so that people can actually see the benefit of what you guys post in the group or... I'm just trying to like, I mean, I'm just- I mean, I don't even need to show us how much money you want or ain't made or anything like that. But at the same time, if you bought it and I'm just, whatever you want to share about it, it'd be great. Um, but it, but I'm just saying this example, I'm up, you know, eight points, Yeah. right? Or nine points, right? And, and, um, and, and Tilray, so- I don't plan on selling it until I get my big payout from, <laughs> from Congress, right? Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I know that what that means is I have to deal with the fluctuations of my account. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know, and that's fine. So then uh, his, his put strategy gives me a way to make money, you know, um, along, along as I hold the underlying asset. Well, the reason why I'm asking that as well, because there's like over a hundred plus people in the group and, you know, there's, you know, there's six, there's what, five of us here, but there, there's something that someone else in the group might also benefit from, from something that we, the people that are participating in the calls in real time, got from it that can help somebody else as well. So it's just about us keeping recycling information, you know, with each other so that we can all be successful. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. Okay. Um, definitely sharing in a group, but the truth of the matter is I'm not doing this so that we can have a thousand people in a group or I'm, that's not, or, or for the number of people that's on this call, right? Ideally, we would all be like, hey, I want to build wealth together and stuff like that. That's yeah. on your masses, right? I, for real, that's the daydream. But the reality is right now it's mostly about, we got Jamera and I obviously been doing this for a while, right? Um, we're both to some doing this either part-time or full-time as a real means of generating revenue, right? So we decided, hey, let's work together, right? He has his objectives, I have mine, and 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 create some content around it. Now, it's three other people on the call. If you all are benefited from it and you post how you benefit from it, then that will probably add to. But what I find is, unfortunately for us, there's too many of us that are well educated, right? Mid career, you know, doing, you know, have discretionary income and have zero knowledge of how to have our money or not nearly enough knowledge of how to make our money work for us. Mm-hmm right? Um, at least not in this. They buy real estate. Everybody knows you'll know, buy a house, you know, whatever, right? So people do that. But as it pertains to the stock market, people just don't want to get involved. And I feel like the only way to do that is to do no like trust, right? They're in the group. They, they some of us, we all know somebody in the group and they either like you or they don't. They like you, then they start to trust you. And that's what it is, right? Eventually, if I said CRM is going to go up and it goes up, you can't deny that right you know so whether you take advantage of it i can't control that part right so it'd be cool if you put it in the group okay and 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 if you are and i i'm trying to do a better job of putting wins and losses in the group man i did this and it didn't work right so it's not selling the dream right it's it's man this happened and this is why it happened and i shouldn't have done that right um that's important as well to build trust um so I think we can leverage the group for general conversation between the sessions, but uh, we can leverage the sessions to put online. People can go watch it. Mm-hmm. And we can, it's my concern is not with how many people join the call, it's with how well the people who join the call are able to execute what we did, talked about. That's more my, my point. Mm-hmm. So that means that all y'all are gonna, either put on an option trade or <laughs> <laughs> or or buy some stock I'm this week. I'm sitting on the diving board looking yeah. at the yeah. water. At least try a paper trading account. At least try a paper yeah. trading account. Some, okay. Somebody, y'all yeah. got cash out. Y'all got $20. Y'all, <laughs> y'all could go buy Salesforce and ride it out. $24. You can $50 for a little razzle dazzle. <laughs> <Right now. laughs> and just sit and watch. And, all right. It's good. This is a good call. Thank you guys. For yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, you, thank, you everyone. Everyone. Yeah. thank you for having it, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll talk later. Have a great Sunday. Thank watch you too. Cold. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. <laughs>